this video we will continue with analytical geometry and we will discuss the distance formula. I'll show you how to apply it, how to solve a variable when a coordinate is missing, and also where the formula comes from. In this example, we are given two coordinates, A and B, and we want to find the length of AB. It's not necessary for you to see it on the Cartesian plane, but this is just to illustrate that we're trying to find the distance from point A up until point B. So the distance formula is the square root, and inside the square root we have the x of A minus the x of B squared plus the y of A minus the y of B squared. So the x of A is negative 3, the x of B is positive 5, but I subtract it, so it's minus 5, close the bracket and square it, plus the y of A, which is 4, minus the y of B, which is 10, so it's negative 10 squared. So if I simplify in each bracket, I have negative 8 squared plus negative 6 squared. So that becomes 64 plus 36 inside the square root. And I can add up the numbers inside of the square root. So that becomes 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. So the distance between A and B is 10 units. So in this example, I have EF is equals to the square root of 145. The coordinates of E is 7 and 5. And the coordinates of F is P and negative 4. And the question is, find P where P is bigger than 0, meaning a positive value. So let's start by identifying that we have a distance between two points. And therefore, we can apply the distance formula. So the distance formula is the difference between x values squared plus the difference between y values squared. Now let's substitute. So the x coordinate of E is 7 minus the x coordinate of F which is P and the y coordinate of E is 5 subtracting the y coordinate of f, which is negative 4. So it will be 5 minus negative 4. And now, because we have square roots on both sides, we can square the numbers. Even if you didn't have a square root on both sides, you can eliminate this square root by squaring on the left and squaring on the right. What that allows me to do is to get rid of the square roots on both sides. Now we can start to simplify. On the left, I have nothing to do, so it's just 145. Then this is 7 minus p squared. So a lot of times when people see 7 minus p squared, they simply make it 7 squared minus p squared. But that is not true. 7 minus p squared means 7 minus p times 7 minus p. And then I need to multiply out each term in the first bracket with each term in the second bracket. So I'll have 7 times 7, which is 49, minus 7p minus 7p plus p squared. And if I simplify, it will be 49 minus 14p plus p squared. And that is the correct way of multiplying out 7 minus p squared. So in our equation, we have then 49 minus 14p plus p squared. And then plus, this is 5 minus minus 4, which is 9 squared, and that is 81. Now, before I transpose 145, I will add up like terms. So this will be p squared. There are no other p squares. 
minus 14p. There are no other p's. Then it's 49 plus 81, which is 130. Notice also, I'm writing the exponents of p in descending order. Now, I can transpose the 145, so it becomes negative 145. And if I simplify, I have p squared minus 14p minus 15 equal to 0. Now I have a quadratic equation which I can factorize. And these are skills that we learned in grade 9. So on my factorization, I can see my first bracket will be p minus 15 times p plus 1. Therefore, I have p minus 15 equals to 0. Therefore, p can be 15. Or I have p plus 1 equal to 0. Therefore, p can be negative 1. So I have two possible values. But in the question, it was find p where p is bigger than 0. So that means it must be a positive value. And looking at our answer, I have a positive value, which is acceptable, and a negative value. So p cannot be equal to negative 1. Even though this satisfies the equation, it does not satisfy the question asked originally.